Okay, here we go. Welcome back to Film Studio Taku. As I mentioned in the other video, I am not turning into a douche, nor am I turning into Bono. I have been editing photos and shooting photos for the last two months pretty much every day. And specifically with the editing, my eyes have, getting, got, have gotten a bit strained, and this one specifically is bugging out, kind of twitching on me, um, even as we speak. Uh, as I try to bring my studio back to life and try and light a little bit better, I have a you know light right here as you can see in my eyes, and it's a bit uh, too much for me at the moment. So for the next few videos, uh, these will be on probably. And I hope you like the changes I've made. Uh, this is all stuff I've kind of already had before, but I'm just kind of trying some different lighting. Uh, I'd like to add more to it. Not, I don't want to go over top, over the board. I know that's pretty <laughs> colorful behind me. I do like though how it's popping me out. Anyways, to the point here. Nikon has released a 400 millimeter f 2.8 lens for the Z mount system, and it has a teleconverter uh, mounted into it. I know there's a lot of excitement around it. I had meant to touch base on this lens last month, but due to my hectic schedule, it simply wasn't possible. In short, I really wanted to prepare the new dreamers, the people that are just looking at the Nikon system for the first time, thanks to the Z9, uh, for the sticker shock. It's something that I knew was coming, a lot of professionals knew was, com knew was coming. Uh, the stark reality is that the lens is not uh, something you should all be waiting on and hoping for, it, or should have been, and I wanted to prepare you before the release. Too late. Only a handful of people, professionals, uh, and people with money to burn are going to be buying this lens. For the people with the money to burn, you need to understand the weight of the lens and the size very well. And this is a task that I am definitely able to help you with. Oh. <laughs> So, in this monster bag, this is the Nikkor 200 to 400 millimeter AFS VR ED lens. So, this is actually the predecessor to the 402.8 in many ways. Although the family tree, which was kind of a straight bamboo shoot, is splitting now into an actual tree, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So for those wondering what 2,950 grams or almost 3 kilograms of lens feels like, this is about 3,250 grams, so in that ballpark. And I use this on a Z6, so the Z6 being slightly lighter than the Z9, the Z9 with that 402.8 is about the same. So we're talking very similar all up weight here. So firstly, let me show you that backpack again. If I can get this out of frame. So pretty much you need this backpack or a very similar competitor's backpack if you're considering anything in a 2.5 kilogram plus range, unless you're just doing super short hikes from your car to a scenic overview or nature that's just right there. So Nikon generally supplies their own backpack with lenses like this. And mine came with one as well. I bought my lens actually used, but this backpack came to me with the lens inside from the previous owner, and it's clear the backpack has never been used for anything other than storing the lens. And I too have never taken this bag out of my house, let alone uh, the closet. I've actually been keeping it in the box that the Nikon, the original Nikon box that it came with. And the reason why, well, because although it is actually very, very sturdy and great protection, its straps are simply not up to it. They look decent, right? Like decent wide straps. But with the weight of this lens, it's not going to be, it's going to be painful after not very long. Um, so again, maybe for a short walk from your car to a scenic overview, but at that point, what's the point of having it in a bag? You might as well just have a lens strap and carry it that way. So Nikon used to supply hard cases uh, for these types of lenses, which were made out of metal uh, usually. And they sometimes weighed more than the actual lenses themselves, and they're pretty much bulletproof. But the weight is just ridiculous. So the soft backpack shape storage unit thing here <laughs> does make logistical sense and might be nice for some lighter lenses, you know, if you want to carry them around. But 
you know, other than saving on shipping costs and providing in most travel situations adequate protection for moving from point A to point B, it's just not up to spec for hiking around with it. You know, it just, yeah. It doesn't, I believe, even have, yeah, I haven't even, you know, honestly, I haven't even looked at this. It doesn't even have, this one doesn't have dual straps. This is a, just a singular strap. So, again, yeah, I would never want to carry all that weight on one shoulder. That would kill me, personally. So, the backpack I have <laughs> is the previous generation from Vanguard. And it's called the Cuovio line. And this is the Cuovia 66. The newer model is a gray color, and they now call it the Alta Sky or the Alta Sky 66, presumably because Quovia is hard enough to pronounce, let alone spell or remember. So what is Quovia, by the way? I don't know. If anybody knows, please let me know. So names aside, this backpack is very legit. Um, and although there are some minor gripes I have with the extra storage spaces, Though ample in size, there's not a lot of separation, and I'll get into that in another review about this backpack. But the actual design of the main compartment, which is solely designed for a very large lens, see if you can get in there. Can I show you? Oh my god, this is impossible. Which is solely designed for a very large lens is nearly perfect, <clears throat> creating an extremely well protected cocoon, specifically around the main front optics. Essentially, it is a sized up version of the Nikon bag uh, in that sense of ruggedness, but again, it's just way better design. The main point is this bag, or at least this type of bag that you need if you even are considering a 2.5 kilogram plus lens, is made specifically for those lenses. Now, the bag itself supposedly is 2.5 kilograms, according to B&H. And though I haven't put it on the scale, I really don't think it's 2.5 kilograms. Uh, I would say 1.5 probably. Regardless, it is a heavy bag, especially if you're coming from you know lighter, smaller bags for smaller lenses. But it goes with the territory. Most importantly, this bag has these massive wide shoulder straps that are very well padded and a very, very wide waist belt and stern uh, sternum strap actually is probably the only weakness I would say it's it's I would like it thicker and padded as well. I realize it might not be as fashionable and some guys might feel a little like they're wearing a bra if you have a really big padded sternum strap. But when I'm carrying around a massive lens and laying in the dirt photographing wildlife, I really don't care anymore what I look like. And I would personally wear a bright pink back with polka dots if it was the only choice and it helped disperse the weight better. Okay, so the 400 2.8 lens. When they say the dimensions of the lens are 6.1 inches by 15 inches, that's without the lens hood. The lens hood, which I do have fully extended here, is actually reversible. So what they're talking about is they're talking about the length without the lens hood on. When you store it, it nicely, it does basically remain the same length, and I would say actually exactly the same length on this lens. But when you flip it over and you're actually using it in the field, it's nearly two feet of length, I believe about 21 inches. And there's no getting around the size of it or the weight. And that's just something, again, with this level of lens that it's designed for one purpose, and that is to take the best quality photos while being technically portable. It doesn't mean you should really hand hold it all day. Uh, though I do do this, and I know others do. Um, I do this with a 200, 400 millimeter. I'm telling you firsthand that my arms and hands not only hurt sometimes, my hands actually feel like they've been crushed when I wake up the next day after a long shoot. Uh, or even sometimes in the middle of the night I wake up because of pain. Nikon's probably not going to invite me to be a Nikon ambassador anytime soon after this video for that and other obvious reasons. But I just want to get the point across because I've noticed a trend of people buying cameras and lenses simply because they are the best and the most expensive available and it seems to be especially a trend over the last year or two here so in general it's harmless i think relatively speaking uh, except to their bank accounts and a bit to the environment and though i think a fourteen thousand dollar lens will detour most that have no business buying this kind of lens i am certain there will be some that just want bragging rights so to those few idiots hello idiots
might I humbly suggest to you, either buy a hovercraft instead and have a load of fun with the kids around your neighborhood, or buy something like this 200 to 400 millimeter or a 300 millimeter f2.8 lens, which is similar in size and weight with a brighter f2.8 aperture, and see how you feel about it. Nikon doesn't need your money for the 400 2.8 lens at this moment. Uh, honestly, they're gonna be hard pressed to keep up with demand anyways, and you'll only be delaying that lens getting into the hands of true professionals that could truly benefit from it. And hopefully, uh, you know, further their careers and make some money that they need in these hard times. So this leads me to the who, what, and why of this review. Who is this lens for? Well, I already said it, true professionals or hardcore hobbyists, uh, bird photographers that have been doing this for, you know, decades. You know, mostly they're retired, well aware of the costs, the size, the weight, and they're used to grappling with these kinds of lenses and it's just their lifestyle. So what is the lens? As I mentioned, it's a continuation of this 200 to 400 millimeter design, which was made famous or popular anyways, after failure to sell the original manual focus models due to the unusual zoom range, uh, which wasn't very much, you know, 200 to 400 millimeters, just not a lot of range. Uh, and it led the original versions to be sold for very cheap eventually, at which point Art Wolf uh, picked up a copy just because he figured what the hey, the price is right, and I'll give it a try. So, you know, Art Wolf being Art Wolf, he took some great photos with it, and the general public saw them and they decided, oh, that's the lens to have. It must be the lens. <laughs> so it is a great lens. It, is a great lens let's be clear about the optics on this um, are great and eventually the lens became AFS as this one is and got VR the VR version 1 is the one I'm holding right now shortly after a V version 2 was made with purportedly better VR although this copy the VR is spectacular as you can see in these sample shots the only thing you're going to notice is some wobble which and shake, which is me, because usually I do video at the end of the day. I don't know why I keep doing this. I shoot all these photos, and then I decide, oh, I'll do some video, and my arms are dead at that point. <laughs> but keep in mind that most of this is at 400 millimeters, so realistically, yes, uh, the, the VR is, you know, and this, this is not a very new lens. It's not super old, but it's above anything else I'm seeing out there. So a couple of years ago, though, the lens after the version two uh, was doing very well, had a very major revision or really became a new lens, but the core tech remained the same, except for one thing that will make this all very clear and it all makes sense in a moment. The lens became a 180 to 400 millimeter, still F4, officially dubbed AFS Nikkor 180 to 400 millimeter F4E TC 1.4 FLED VR. So yes, that TC internal teleconverter was added. This was an amazingly logical step for this lens because using a teleconverter on the 200 to 400 millimeter F4 lens here was hugely popular. Not just any teleconverter, mind you, but the F1.4 converter. The reason being that on recent Nikon bodies with phase detect autofocus, phase detect will switch to contrast detect if it falls below f5.6. So with a 2.0 teleconverter, it's f8 and the phase detect will no longer work. But a 1.4 gives you a constant f5.6, keeping your phase detect autofocus working at a very useful 280 millimeter to 560 millimeter zoom range. However, switching out teleconverters for various scenarios in the wilderness on a three plus kilogram lens is not always so fun or practical. And this is why the evolution made perfect sense. The slightly shorter 180 millimeters meant a bit more wideness on the short end, which was a welcome addition. That lens, by the way, is still sold new for $12,000. 
This is why the price of the new Z mount 400 millimeter f2.8 uh, should not be so shocking and if anything is lower than it could have been. Sorry, yeah, I know this thing is, I need some sticky tape or something to keep those in place. <laughs> so where this gets really interesting though, as I alluded to earlier, the once linear tree seems to be growing branches. The 400 millimeter f2.8 being released first actually seems to be a bit of a signal in my opinion from Nikon of this. So when you look at the future roadmap for Nikon Z mount lenses, there's at least one lens in silhouette which should look strikingly familiar. Do you see it? Well, that's the 200 to 600 millimeter lens on their roadmap. So unless the silhouette is lying or just strikingly similar for other reasons, that is not going to be a 200 to 560 millimeter replacement lens. That is seemingly the linear step for the lens I'm holding in my hands. So presumably they backed off on the wide end and decided to give the fans what they really wanted, which was more reach. Now, assuming this is correct, there are some questions here. And the first is, is it actually just a 200 to 400 millimeter with a teleconverter? And they are cleverly hiding it with a close enough representation of the range? Or is this a true 200 to 600 millimeter in essentially the same package as the 200 to 400 millimeter? Because see, this is where all those complaints about mirrorless lenses not really being smaller and lighter kind of go out the window. Backing up just for a second, the 400 millimeter f2.8 Z mount lens is nearly three kilograms, yes, and it is substantial. However, the F mount 400 millimeter f2.8 lens, which a friend of mine carries around the local nature park, though slightly smaller than the Z mount version, weighs in at 3,800 grams, almost four kilograms. So that's about two pounds more weight than the Z mount version. So it stands to reason a 200 millimeter, 600 millimeter lens could come in at somewhere around three kilograms or maybe even less, but that range that the 200 to 400 millimeter fans are used to and comfortable with, it'll still need to be at least F4 to make the core market pounce. And also if they intend to throw the icing on the cake by continuing the teleconverter trend I think it'll be very, very popular. So potentially we're looking at a 200 millimeter to 600 millimeter constant F4 lens and with a teleconverter, a 280 to 840 constant F5.6. Even as I typed that up, it sounded too good to be true. But unless Nikon is pushing this 200 to 400 millimeter further down the line and going to release this actual lens, it would make sense and be absolute genius squashing forever any doubts about DSLR versus mirrorless for the future of long lens photography. Here more than anywhere, weight, reach, and light gathering ability are pretty much everything. Of course, image quality, and of course, autofocus is important too, but personally, I would trade off less keepers for a better, lighter lens, though I think mirrorless is nearly caught up with the DSLRs and from Nikon in terms of autofocus anyways. And clearly that tech will evolve forward and get very, very good very soon. So yeah. So there you have it. Uh, lenses you almost definitely don't need. Explained a bit by someone who does have a little bit of experience. Um, will I buy the 400 2.8? It's unlikely in this decade. Will I buy a 200 to 600 millimeter at four? TC. If, as I hope, I can start making a real living from photography soon, particularly from nature photography, and it's under 10K, it's on my radar. And that's something I would never have said a year ago. But mm. realistically, though, I doubt I would buy it for at least three years. Uh, I'd both be waiting for the price to drop and maybe look for it on the used market as well as for my budget to rise. So here to end this out, uh, here's some of my photos and uh, 
kind of my experience. Basically, you know, this is something that when you go to this level of telephoto photography, you're not doing this anymore um, as a, as a hmm, it's a labor of love. And I mean, I emphasizing the labor because when you carry around this kind of weight in a backpack, uh, it does take its toll on you. And it's why when you walk around, at least in Japan, you know, the photographers, you'll, you will see photographers into their, you know, 60s, maybe 70s carrying around these big lenses. But after that, they pretty much all start carrying around these little point and shoots because uh, as healthy as the Japanese people are, I mean, it's just, it's substantial. So if you are not somebody who likes to go hiking with a big backpack, um, somebody who doesn't like to carry big bags of groceries around. I don't know. I don't know the example to give you that will relate to you, but I'm just telling you again, as I'm, I'm trying to hold this up for most of this video, you know, it's like sometimes I'm just like, uh, it's, it's substantial. You could, you could get a genuine workout just curling this thing. I mean, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's pumped me up a bit. My stomach's getting big because I stopped biking around as much lately due to another change in my life, but that's neither here nor there. So yeah, um, little side notes on these types of lenses. Um, this is customized not only uh, with the lens cover, which I would say the Roland Pro that I got, uh, I, I'd been watching other Japanese photographers and what they're using the Roland Pro seemed po popular. As with most of my um, goods, I buy, bought it used um, and new condition though. I always look for new condition and it's been outstanding. Uh, does slip around a little bit, I mean, more because of the way I'm holding it right now, but uh, I do want to like maybe put a couple well placed double stick tapes uh, inside to kind of keep it from slipping. But uh, but this handle, this is the uh, Wimberly again, use half price as I think about a hundred dollars on BH, I got it for fifty dollars. Um, I do have my lens strap attachment on here too. But the Wimberly is so much more comfortable than the, the Nikon one that came with it. The Nikon one that came with it particularly my hands every night were very very painful when I'd wake up it sucked so this one is a lot more comfortable to carry around um, it's it's weird because they this doesn't, it doesn't look super ergonomic and I think we could do better on ergonomics uh, if somebody really got really serious but compared to the Nikon version it's like heaven so anyways that's pretty much it we're gonna wrap it up here I know it's kind of a weird little petering out ending but I hope you enjoy the footage and uh, photos. And if you're curious, I am going to start selling my prints. I still need to work on uh, creating that website. But if you'd like any of these in large prints for your home office, whatever, reach out to me. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to manage that on YouTube. Um, I'm sure we can figure something out. But yeah, thanks for watching. And I look forward to talking to you again. I'm coming out with some more videos very, very soon. I've finally got stuff a little bit more streamlined in here. And I look forward to the day when I no longer look like a douchebag. Oh, it's worse. Shit. Maybe. Anyways, thanks for watching. Peace.